Hello everyone and welcome to In the Greenhouse, the relaxing little behind the scenes series here with Siri as we answer your questions that you have left in previous video comments and just discover what is going on in our personal lives. A little bit about you, a little bit about me, a little bit about the series that we have here on our channel. And we also learn that apparently Siri cannot remember to take care of her virtual garden. Oh dear, everything's dying! I keep forgetting to, to check in on things because I've been so busy lately and I come back and and yeah, nobody nobody's fared very well. Ooh, ooh, ooh. At least the bamboo left behind some seeds. I feel so bad. Like everything is just killed over and dry. And just when we're getting some really stunning, very unique plants growing too. Oh, look at this one. It's a little flower is all buried so low. But yeah, that's just because we have been so busy lately you guys. I have been putting out a lot of videos every day and that's okay because we're tackling a few really big projects. Oh look in the Venus orchid! <gasps> look at all the seeds it put behind. Oh my gosh those seeds are so beautiful. Ooh, 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 and a butterfly. Gotcha! But yes we've been putting out a lot of videos lately and that's because our community is growing so much. We are slowly approaching 8,000 members and I just am blown away by that. And you know, the number is less important to me than making sure that everyone's like having a good time, learning something, enjoying being here. Alright, let's get these out of the way. These out of the way. And gotcha. Oh, there we go. But yeah, that's actually why every time we hit a thousand milestone, I try to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who's in our community because I feel like that's very important. Those are people. You guys are, are real living people who take time to join us on our adventures. And I think there is no more precious thing that someone could give me than their time and attention so that I can have the opportunity to hopefully teach them about some of the amazing things that go on in the world we share. So that's why I always stop and say thank you even though some people are like, yeah, I don't know, the milestone isn't isn't that big if it's just another thousand. To me, I, I never forget that that's a thousand people, so that's why I do it. Alright, let's get the pear cactus planted. All right, I think it's just himself, so we'll keep the grown pear cactus and sell the seeds. No, you want to be sold, seed. You want to be sold. There we go. But yeah, I'm really happy to show off the side quests we've been doing lately. Alright, I think that that's just more Venus bamboo. So it hurts me to sell these seeds, but we're going to. There we go. And one of those. No clue what that is. Let's sell the seeds though. Oh, they're worth 10? That's slightly alarming. Alright, well I'll remember that. I hope that I'm not selling like really important things. Alright, and then we'll pop into the nursery. There we go. And now we can watch as the plants sell. And I can go through some of your amazing questions you have left. And oh, just thank you so much for all of your support, especially you guys who watch the Greenhouse series, because I feel like that's where we really can take down the walls and talk person to person, so to say. Because um, it's just, it's been amazing. I had a lot of fun opening the Etsy shop and making the mushrooms and the diamond ores, and I'm really, as, as things are coming together and we have patrons and donations, it's helping me really feel like we can get some of the major goals I've always wanted for our community done, like opening that server. I am so excited. I have been looking into all sorts of details for the server. I am looking at like Plant Mega Pack is going to be updating very soon, so I'm very excited about that. Looking at how Plant Mega Pack plans to update so that we can add that, because he's going to do hopefully um, region on the plants where they will generate over a period of time so you can empty a forest, come back in, and the plants will have regenerated. And really, if he can do that, then I just have so many dreams and ideas for our server. It would just be amazing. And I, I mean, the festivals we could hold, like a Christmas or like, well, I would probably call it like winter celebration. Oh, just in the buildings to build and just seeing people bring things to life in that world. It would be really fun, but a ton of work, so it really means a lot that people have been uh, able, because I know not everyone's able to, and so I always try to make sure people know that, like I said, the most precious thing anyone can give you is their time. And as long as you always respect that and you treat it with the respect it deserves, I don't think you can go wrong. So 
and with so many videos being released, there are a lot of people giving me a lot of time. In fact, if I pull up, uh, you can pull up your Google Analytics when you put YouTube videos up, and you can look at how many, I kind of want to do that right now, but nah, nah, we'll be okay. But you can look at how many um, minutes people watch, and I think that in the last 30 days, like something like 4 million minutes of time has been spent watching our videos. And we have almost 800 videos now, um, which is, you know, I'm in that interesting phase where I'm I'm emerging from this has been a hobby to this is my career. So I'm learning about what it takes to try to, to navigate the future. Thankfully, I'm not in a position where I have to be too stressed about money right now. So because uh, my wonderful darling takes care of a lot of things and I always need to send more money to my parents because they need the help desperately all the time because uh, they're very sick and I just want to make them as comfortable as I can for however long I have left with my parents. Um, so yeah, I, I do a lot of supporting, I want to do a lot more of supporting them too. So you know, I mean yes, money is very important, but I'm grateful that I keep coming back again and again and again come on you guys, buy that bamboo, to being able just to stick to my values of, of wanting to make sure that people feel safe in our community, that we try to educate. I spend a lot of time watching documentaries and reading nonfiction books like academic textbooks and things to try to bone up on my knowledge that I want to share with you guys because I want to make sure I'm, I'm propagating correct information. Oh, and we sold so many things, so let's hop in here. Oh, that's why! It's diseased. No wonder no one wanted to buy it. Well... Oh! I thought it, like, died! It looked like a little dead sapling, and I was like, Oh, that happened so fast! But actually, it's just a wee little baby! Look at that! There you go, wee baby! Have some plant food! But yeah, so it's... It's just really amazing to feel the shift happening, where suddenly you have to sit down, and you have to very seriously consider how you allot your time, and what you do and how you interact with people but it's so calming for me uh, I don't know if some of you more adult age people out there have ever read Seven Habits of a Highly Successful Person but Stephen Covey uh, is highly respected among members of my family and my community so I've read a lot of his work starting with Seven Habits of a Highly Successful Family actually which is the book that changed my life uh, completely changed my life. I, I owe all of my current success, all of my happiness, all of my... well not all of my happiness, that's a strong way to put it. Basically I think that the seven habits of the highly successful family really gives you the the layout for how to have successful human relationships on the most intimate level, which is the family level. And so I've been rereading that one and then for the first time reading Seven Habits of a Highly Successful Person and it sounds like one of those gimmicky self-help books but it's actually all about finding your values, finding your principles, and those things, I'm a very very liberal person so those things aren't as antiquated as they can seem, um, and then just sticking to them and so it's been a real joy rereading the books and, and realizing that a lot of the things I want to do with my channel oddly enough come from my deeper values of service and education and kindness, safe space for people, um, and that kind of ties in to a really awesome question that I have, I've been carrying around with me from Keegan for a long time. And Keegan asked this question a couple times and I haven't answered it yet because I was trying to put it into words that I could explain easily but it's where do you get your sense of fairness and equality from? I find it refreshing to see a YouTuber who pursues fairness so intensely and keeps so much diversity in the characters they create, especially in Laudacia, my Sims 2 series. Hope you're having fun with whatever time it is when you read this. Thank you, Keegan. And I haven't answered that question for a little bit because I really wanted to do it justice, and I hope I can, because fairness, equality, um, all of that... I was raised by a great family, and I guess maybe maybe the fact that like my mom is white and my dad is mixed Hawaiian uh, kind of helped because we were the very first very first mixed babies in my family on my mom's side um, 
and that was well received. It, it, like now, we were the first ones, and my, my grandparents had been from, like, on one side had been from deep south <laughs> before that. So I think my mom spun their head just a teensy bit, but times were changing back then. And my mom married my dad, and um, we were the first mixed babies in the family. And to people who don't have those kinds of family dynamics, they may not understand how little it matters, and yet how much it can change how your family then operates with the rest of the world. Opens up minds, opens up a way of seeing things. Uh, it's very, very difficult to describe. Now my family is composed of people from all over the world. Um, adopted children from Vietnam, Guatemala, jeez, uh, all over the place. So it was really funny because we joked whenever the census guy comes to our house, it's like, well, you're gonna get a little bit of everybody from every country and you're gonna get like all sorts of jobs and backgrounds. So my family is really open and loving and they have great principles. I don't know better people than my parents. I honestly don't. My dad is my hero because he has always stood by his principles, no matter what the world has thrown at him. And he has suffered through some pretty intense things when he became so sick and was fired from his job. Um, because he was sick, he had a really great job. But they had a policy where if he died on the job, it was a $1 million life insurance payout. So he was fired as soon as they found out that he had heart troubles. And it that's that pretty much took the wind out of our family's cells. And we've never been able to recover from that, especially when my mom became so sick and then my brothers. So it was a downward spiral, and yet he never lost his integrity. He never lost his sense of fairness, his sense of justice, his sense of no matter how hard things got, he would pull through and he would be kind. You could yell at him. There were times when I was a teenager when I was horrible. I would yell and scream and rail and the I hate you's that happen when you're a teenager and you're overwhelmed by your world, your hormones, the chaos in your life that actually isn't so chaotic you realize when you get older. But in a way it's normal for a teenager and I can remember saying the most terrible things to him and he would just come over and put his hand on my shoulder or give me a hug look me in the eye and tell me that he loved me, no matter what I did. That unconditional love, which is another thing that is championed in the Seven Habits books, is an amazing, amazing, amazing resource. And I think it, it's, it's vital to have that in any relationship that you want to be successful and flourishing and truly loving. And that's what my father gave me. He never truly lost his temper at me. He never made me feel like I couldn't go back and and find love and support from him. No matter, I mean, this is a man who can no longer stand or sit for any period of time because of the intense pain he is in 24-7. And yet, he will leap up. If you go, huh, I'm kind of thirsty. He will leap up, even though it causes him so much pain, and go and get you a drink. Uh, and I would come home after he couldn't work anymore he had a really hard time with that and i mean we all did because it was hard to get food to eat um like it was really difficult and still is very difficult for my family which is one of the reasons i work so hard people ask me why i put so many videos out why i do so much work and that's because this is currently the avenue through which i can take care of my family so i'm going to do my best because i watched my father do his best my whole life and it is an honor to follow in his footsteps also, this is the most beautiful orchid I have ever seen. We are propagating this puppy. Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. But yes, so I think my sense of fairness and equality, justice, loyalty, love, all of that comes from my father, who showed me those things, abundantly showed me those things. All right, we're gonna have to propagate, wait. Um, so yeah, it's... <laughs> He just, he's, he's always been my hero because he's always stood by his values, always taken care of his family, always done such an amazing job doing those things. Um, and my mother, of course, had a big influence too. She championed her children. She defended us. It was very difficult when we found out my brothers had autism because that was back in an era where, like now, everyone knows about it, but we're talking 20 years ago. And so this was when, like, my mom took my brother, I remember this even though I was very little, but my mom took my brother at 
four years old, didn't say a word to the pediatrician. He never spoke, no babbling, nothing. Took him to the pediatrician in Texas and asked, what's wrong with my son? <laughs> He's not talking. He's not developing like his older sisters did. And the pediatrician kind of looked my brother up and down and he thought everything was fine. And so he told my mother that the problem was that she didn't beat him enough to to get him to do what he was supposed to, to get him to behave, to get him to try talking, try learning his ABCs. He didn't beat him enough. So, <laughs> Needless to say, my mom, I think she would have like put a new hole in that doctor's wall if she had been allowed to <laughs> with the doctor going through it. But my mom, from that point forward, became my brother's biggest champion. She, back in the day when people didn't really understand what the heck learning disabilities were, how they affected them, anything. She did everything she could. She read, she demanded that my brothers be allowed to see specialists, therapists. I think that her determination to give them early intervention is why they have flourished the way they have now that they're becoming adults. She didn't lose her patience with them in a way that that she could have ever um because it's very 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 challenging to raise children that have learning disabilities it's so challenging to raise children in the first place i've spent five years as a live-in nanny many of uh like and with foster children too i helped raise foster children and it was very challenging at times many of the the babies we had we're talking infants had learning disabilities because of uh, how how they had been treated or abused unfortunately and it was very, very hard. And I remember one time holding a screaming baby and I, I just got this flashback of how this baby had nonstop screamed for seven hours, just like my brother used to, and realizing the fortitude it took for my mom to take care of him with such love and devotion as she did, because it's really hard. But my mother's devotion to us um, and to, to her, her sense of creativity and imagination, she's an artist and watching her create as I grew up, um, I honestly think it sounds weird, but I think that watching someone be creative and watching them interact with the world with their imagination and encourage others to do so, I think that that is also an essential principle in being able to have a sense of equality, justice, fairness, love in your life. I think that that sense of creativity gives you a sense of joy that opens the pathways for love and discipline oddly enough to follow so i really think my parents are a huge influence on my sense of fairness in life and i was not i was not the smartest of teenagers um i mean i did very very well academically but i had a very difficult time growing up um for a lot of reasons a lot of reasons but I know that my parents having those principles and values, even if they didn't explicitly spell them out, even if they didn't like always meet what they would want to, I know that had a huge influence on me and I'm so grateful for that. Um, and then I did, I did a lot of reading. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I think that's where my sense of fairness comes from too. I did a lot of reading. I was part of groups that were considered fringe groups, but not, not in like, um, a rebellious way just i when i was a teenager that was when a lot of the like uh, how do i put it like a lot of the the more cultural movements being more aware of people's culture more aware of respecting their different sexualities their different presentations that was when that was just starting to happen and i had a lot of friends in those groups especially when i lived in austin so that definitely helped me too going out and experiencing the world from a different point of view than you would normally live gives you a wonderful perspective for being more open and aware to how others live and that there's far more than one correct way to live your life and i think that's why i'm such a laid-back vegan <laughs> I know a lot of other vegans who really rail to the heavens, um, and that's fine for them, but I I think that's why I just kind of ended up where I have. You just follow where your values go. So, very long-winded answer, but I'm happy with it. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I apologize for babbling for a little bit. That's just a very big subject to tackle, but I'm glad I tried. I hope, I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into where my heart and my head have come from. And my parents are definitely the source. And that's why I try so hard to try to do my best to take care of them today. So I hope I'm successful. It's really tricky. <laughs> 
You know, it's like, okay, are you guys okay? I gotta call up, because you, you want to respect your parents being independent, but then you eventually, especially when they become sick, uh, reach an age where it's your turn to take care of them. And in many ways, because they've been sick, I've done that for a lot of my life, but that's why I work so hard, so I can try to do it some more, because I love my mom and dad, and I want to do my best to try to give them, give them a good life. So, and that's why I'm so excited. They're hopefully coming out at the end of the month and we're gonna go to Washington, DC. It'll be the very first vacation that my parents have gone on together since they got married, just themselves. We went on one or two when I was a child, but like before dad had uh, got fired. But this will be the very first one where it's just themselves. So I'm really hoping they'll be able to come up to my beautiful temperate rainforest mountains and enjoy themselves. So enough of my babbling. I've gone on and on. I can do that if you get me started on like deeper values and principles and especially my mom and dad. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and thank you very much for giving me the invaluable time that you have. And I hope that you guys just find some sense of joy and deeper purpose and it doesn't have to be fancy like I said I, I realized a lot of the deeper things in life just through watching my mom make scrapbook pages because there is definitely something essentially important about pursuing joy so I hope you guys can do that and I will talk to you soon bye bye